This episode of Heroes of the Horn is brought to you by Lord James and Oshaman of the Black Tower. He will not yield, even when hope is gone. Welcome to Heroes of the Horn, a Wheel of Time podcast. I am Sir Matt. And I am Sir Ezra. Welcome to our Wheel of Time book club. The horn has sounded, and we have answered the call. Today we are covering The Great Hunt, chapters 28 through 34. Woo! As you know, you and I were talking um, just beforehand, before we started recording here, and this is the first time, let me, maybe this isn't the first time, maybe I've said this before. Which I probably maybe I, even if I go back and listen, I say this every episode. But yeah, <laughs> the first time I've actually felt a little overwhelmed. Right? It's like yeah, you know, we were talking about how uh, there's a lot of the not necessarily plot movement here, but a lot of world building. So it's like wow, there's just a lot of new pieces, new characters, new things introduced here. I had to actually like listen to this ch- listen to this reading our reading today twice. Uh, yeah. Go back and be like, hold on, who are some of these people? What are some of these things that are going on? Um, you know, we've got some new characters, right? Like the San Chan, and yeah. Uh, yeah, just a lot of a lot of new things, man. We're we're oh, deep yeah. into Deus de Mar. Tom's yeah. <laughs> got some uh, some troubles going on. He gets some pretty great moments. Rand's being, yeah. uh, you know, uh, let me let me see here. Pers- trying to, he's almost. Uh, there's some women trying to persuade Rand. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And yeah, all of this well, stuff. So yeah, it's yeah, and it, it's like you say, it doesn't really. Um, there's not like a lot of movement or plot prog- progression um, because, li- at least in this in this batch of chapter, this chapters chapters that we have here, in, right? Yeah, because like the first two, I think we're gonna take chapters 28 and and 29 and slow down just a little bit. Um, because they do introduce two different kind of cultures and we can kind of talk about those. So yeah, we almost like divert, slow down, calm her down for a second and learn more about this world, uh, and then move on. So it's, it's weird, you know, like it happens sometimes where like a character moves on ahead, then they stall, we do some more world building and then we'll catch up this other group with that character, you know? So that's kind of exactly what happens in this, in this, uh, 28 through 34 so. Right, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, but it's great. I mean, it's good. You know, it's just, gosh, man, a great Tom Marilyn moment. Uh, you know, I really just love, I really, really love Tom, although he and Rand's relationships, eh, it's a little rocky right now, <laughs> yeah. to say the right. least. Yeah. Um, not yeah. as much. And I, I didn't think, uh, man, I mean, Nineen and Gwaine, Nineen and, and Egwene, I mean, Tr- Lan and Moraine, they weren't even really in this block. So, no. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, and that that happens. Like you'll go through these these uh, periods of time where we really don't get much uh, of certain characters. They'll go somewhere, they're off learning, doing something, um, and then they'll come then back. We, we uh, come back. Yeah, they'll, they'll be augmented in some way. They've learned something, and and we pick up on that pretty quickly. And it's believable. I mean, because we just, I don't know, it, it, like it happen. It doesn't happen like a lot, but when it does happen, it happens enough to where it happens with Moraine. Uh, and then like, she, like she's having, like, we're not getting a lot of her right now. Uh, and then, you know, later maybe that'll happen to another character, but not like, Oh, it won't be more rain over and over again. You know what I mean? Like this happens. I think it's just really well, really well done. Actually. I think Robert Jordan knows how to kind of pace that and, and situate everything in, in his story. So it feels still feels good to us. And then it leaves us wondering, we're thinking like, okay, what are those characters doing while Rand is in? Kyrie in and, and uh, tracking down the horn. So, right. but anyways, yeah. So we'll get into that here in just a little bit. But uh, first of all, how you been, man? How's it going? Man, I am good. Busy day today. Today was the first time I've, I've been to a grocery store. My gosh, since March, end of March. Because uh, oh. my girlfriend's a nurse. So we've just kind of, you know, I've been staying at home because that way, you know, she's the one that's out there. So obviously less kind of potential to get you know, COVID and all yep. that stuff. So, uh, but today was our, my first time going. Cause we bought like, um, you know, like the canopy, like a tent kind of a thing for the backyard. 
uh nice so we can we so when when we can have people over and stuff again we we can because our old one blew over in the wind and broke so anyway so i needed to go so i could lift that um crazy man you know it's just weird um warm a mask everything costco you got to wear a mask my gosh, man, I'm gonna let me say something here real quick. Okay. Yeah. You know those people that people make fun of on, on Facebook with the pool noodles, right? And they're like, so they keep everybody six feet away. Yeah. I think those people are on to something. Because <laughs> yeah, nobody's staying six feet away there. I mean, everyone's just running oh. around doing their thing and it's like, hey, can, 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 can now so right, right. I, I'm, I'm a shout out to the pool noodle people, because I think I think they're <laughs> on to something. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's interesting. So for me, you know, I, I just went back to um, to school today for for like the first time, and right. yeah, it was the first time, and it was odd. I realized like where our mailbox area is, where we all go to get our mail. It is such a small, tightly confined right. space that like if you see somebody in there, it used to just be you'd walk by, walk right around them, we'd be real close to each other, you know, reaching over top of somebody to grab your mail or whatever, um, and it just. It was just, things have changed, you know? So now we're all like, there's a line waiting to go into the office. It's like, okay, you guys wait here, let two go in. Then one of those two are out, you two are in. It, it just, it's crazy stuff like that where you start to notice um, all these areas where there was a lot of potential to spread, uh, you know, the flu or whatever, or, right. you know, germs and stuff. So yeah, it's crazy. It's been, it's been different, but um, I'm hoping that, I'm hopeful that, that things are going to be, uh, you know, looking better and just that everyone continues to, you know, take it serious and, and to take care of yourself and take care of your family. Uh, so yeah, just, just yeah. wild times, but crazy, um, crazy. But yeah, yeah. that yeah. man, I'm good. You do and you're, you're doing all right. Yeah. Yeah. Things good. Uh, things are great actually, uh, kind of getting ready for the summer and really the summer is honestly going to be more quarantine for me. That yeah. seems crazy, but like, I, for, for the first, this is the first summer. And I think about, uh, eight or seven years where I'm not going to be doing like summer school and work, you know, that kind of thing or coaching. So I'm actually really excited. I was supposed to go to Scotland that got canceled, uh, with my dad, my dad and I were going to go big, big trip for us, but that's all good. And I'm just going to find a way to do like maybe a mini, you know, um, road trip, just driving, just sightseeing, staying in the car or something like that. And then, yeah, making more content. We have been having an absolute blast. Um, <sighs> We've been hammering just, uh, away is the, is the yeah. way to say it. Yeah, yeah, we have. It just like with our YouTube and uh, doing some st fun stuff. I'm working on some more Patreon stuff uh, for our heroes here. And once this summer, again, like I said, give me like a week or two here and I'll be I'll be really uh, ha hammering down on that. But so we kind of as we move from a hero's welcome into the village council, we, I kind of wanted to talk about some of the stuff we are doing on YouTube because we're, we're talking more about the TV show a little bit and we've done some speculation over there. Thank you to everyone who has gone and subscribed, by the way. It's been awesome to see everyone's support and uh, you know, the, the comments that you guys leave. And it's new. It's something different that we're, we're trying, but we're excited. And uh, I don't know. It just it just feels really good to be to be doing uh, that type of content there. So if you if you haven't subscribed on YouTube and you'd like to uh, just type in heroes of the horn on YouTube and you'll find us pretty quickly uh, will be the top top search there. And you can subscribe uh, to our channel because we're make, making a lot more of those videos. But Sir Matt, we've been talking about season one. We talked about, um, gosh, a couple of different things. I mean, uh, low gain. We talked about mm -hmm. low gain for a little bit and his role and how it may be uh, increased in season one, which is crazy. Cause I mean, you're reading these books right now. And I remember saying to you, like, you know, the talk is that his character is going to be, uh, increased or some of his story is going to start beforehand. And, and you have not, um, as we're rec re recording this, learned much about him. And we so haven't really seen like, him much. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's shocking to you. I think that that would be a character we would, you know, it just doesn't even like you, right. you, you don't see it. Right. I mean, it's just not. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about that. We've talked. I mean, we just talked about where do we think they're going to go? How many, you know, how many episodes, you know, just all that kind of stuff to breaking down any little tidbit we get of the, you know, whether the director says something or an actor says something. What can we kind of piece together um, to to kind of see how's it how's it going to look? How's it going to go? How's this how's this TV show going to go? I mean, there are countries are now starting to let people film and stuff. So stay tuned. I mean, uh, you know, we may get a teaser trailer or something here soon. Yeah. I mean, it's possible. 
Oh, that would be so awesome. I would be so stoked because I, I, I can already tell just by uh, Rafe Judkins sort of like reaction to what he has seen and the way they're doing channeling and yeah. rain. And he's like, you just have to see it in like, like finished up. Like he doesn't want to show any behind the scenes stuff because he's like, you're going to want to see this and be just blown away. And I'm, I'm all for it. And, and by the way, I think I mentioned this last time, but I am very impressed. The more uh, that I learn about Rafe Judkins and I learn about um, the, the team and, and the directors and the cast, I'm very impressed. And I'm actually starting to think this is like, I've always thought it was going to be really big. It was going to be a great production because uh, Amazon's putting a lot of money into this and this seems like it's going to be a big deal. But I am just more and more blown away by how careful they've been, how much uh, thought and effort they've put into this. It's it's really exciting. So if you if you want updates on that, that's sort of some of the stuff we're talking about on YouTube, and we're looking at like uh, Instagram, you know, Q and A's from Rafe, um, the uh, Watt on Prime uh, Twitter account has been running a book club, so that's been kind of cool. Um, we, you know, Matt and I, um, I've been going in there because it's about Eye of the World, so we're kind of going. I'm, I've been going in there, leaving some comments just to kind of help the discussion along and and to think about uh, different aspects of the. Uh, of the first book that we maybe didn't even cover in in the podcast just due to time and stuff so it's 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 fun and i i think you're right i think we maybe are going to get uh, i think we were going to get something at at, at comic-con but it's been canceled i still think they're going to release something somewhere just to kind of get the hype you got to start kind of getting people hyped and wondering and searching for this kind of stuff and they want to see what type of what would a teaser trailer do is it what's it going to generate are we going to get people kind of you know really talking more about this series so right Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be we'll see. I, I still hope we may get something, you know, some whether it's images or, or something. I think we'll get something around that comic com time. So, yeah. Yeah, I do, too. I do, too. So very excited there. Um, And yeah. OK, so now with that, let me um hop over here. We uh, to our Patreon. We've been running a couple polls over there and I want to go over. I think uh, last week I'm not sure that I went over the polls. So let me pull these up real quick. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance to over on Patreon, we do extended edition where basically if there's something we can't get to, we kind of keep the mics uh, hot and we just uh, roll with it. We talked about Kyrian last time just a little bit. Um, we talked about, um, let me see. Oh, I went into portal stones for a little bit, which was interesting. Hey, they, they um, come back up here. So they do, don't they? And, and I, yeah. and I was actually in my thought process in the last episode, I was actually a little bit like thinking ahead because I, I was when a topic like this and I'm, I'm now like several books ahead just in, in my, in my reading, just cause I'm trying to do some more stuff for the YouTube channel. But um, yeah, like in that discussion that I had on Patreon with, with portal stones, I was really, and it's a tidbit. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't do spoilers there, but I, I definitely was very intrigued by some of Robert Jordan's comments on portal stones and what do, what is that world? You know, uh, what does that mirror world actually mean? Is it real? Uh, all, all of those types of questions, which, you know, I think is interesting. So, um, and then here was something. So remember last week we were talking about uh, Nynaeve's experience in uh, the Terra Angrial, right? And when she was going through kind the of trial. her, uh, her yeah, trial, yeah, like, like for, for acceptance and stuff. So that was interesting. And I think every, like, like she comes, she comes out of that and wants to know was, what she experienced real was that actually real and so it kind of ran a poll and it was just interesting um we kind of had uh, almost a split you know um we had several let's see <laughs> oh actually i put it on so i said yes no or oh robert jordan uh you 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 crazy awesome man you <laughs> mm -hmm. and and three people uh clicked on that which is great which i think uh is, is funny because People are kind of split on whether yes or no, was it actually real? And then what is reality? You know, when you go to those different, um, when you have those visions, you know, of, of what, right. uh, I, cause I think, what, what is it that, uh, she's experiencing some of facing some of her fears for what was, what is, and what will be. Um, so I, maybe it even depends on what are you, you know, looking at to, to go back. I think the, what is, is something that's interesting to, to kind of look at and then what will be you know, her, her future that she's seeing that she has to kind of walk away from. And, uh, yeah, so, so that was fun. Uh, let's see here. The other poll that we ran, 
Oh my gosh, we were talking about Celine. Mm -hmm. And I guess I got a question, you know, um, Matt, what what do you think about Celine? Yeah, I just don't, in general. Uh, I don't know. I mean, she really does not she she does not like being called an Aes Sedai. Let's we can we can we can right. definitely definitely get that out of the way. Um and she's really kind of like, hey, we, we gotta we get this horn, we gotta get it moving. Um, so there's definitely kind of a secret there. I mean, we'll see. I mean, she hasn't been around, so we'll see when she comes back. I mean, what what's a little bit more of it right now? I mean, obviously there's something kind of mysterious about her. They keep asking about her. Rain can't find her. Um, you know, you, they, keep, they, they've told, they tell him in the chapter when we get to it that, you know, there's nobody by that name. I need a last name in order to figure it out. Um, and so then, you know, the, then later the, the, uh, in the last chapter we get to when, um, I'm blanking on his name, but we'll, we'll get there when he's talking to Tom Marilyn before Tom kills him. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, Oh, there's this woman. If we can find this woman about Rand as they're trying to kind of maybe expose Rand, um, for not being a Lord. Uh, and then yeah. Tom ends up killing him. So, you, you know, so we know that she's still around. We just haven't seen her. Yeah. And I, so my, my poll was, you know, kind of like, do, do we trust, uh, Celine? Like what's, what's going on? It's just, um, no, I, 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 I would say no, yeah. I would not, I would not trust her. Right now, you don't trust her. Yeah. No, I okay. do not. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's just some of the stuff we've been covering over there on Patreon. Some great comments, uh, again, from Stephanie, Heather, Craig, uh, and, and others, David, Sir David over there, uh, doing a great job. And I really appreciate it. I love engaging and reading some of your guys' thoughts there. So, um, all right, my friend, let's see here. So let's get into some of this, you know, um, I guess for, you know, and maybe two to three sentences, like a too long, didn't read, like uh, the, the, the gist of this, um, yeah, you know, like I said, we the first chapter we kind of we, we we are going to be learning about the Aiel and then the Shan Chen, and then after that, Sir Matt, you know, you got a little too long, didn't read for us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, look, I already kind of said it earlier. I mean, the back and forth with the horn continues. Uh, I mean, that's now it's just like it's just like a you know it's, it's a back and forth at this at this point. Um, so the back and forth with the horn continues. Um, Rand continues to play Deus de Mar. We, uh, people wonder how Rand can travel so quickly. And then, yep. uh, you know, Tom gets a little upset at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Right. Rightfully <laughs> so. Right. Tom's got right. some stuff going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then there's the thing, right? Is he playing Deus de Mar or what, exactly. what is Rand yeah, actually doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it's, ah, oh, that's crazy. I mean, I, I love Deus de Mar just because, like it would be boring, I think, if it weren't for Rand being like, "I'm not playing the game," and then right. everyone else is just like, "Ooh, he's yeah. a master at well, this and, game." And, and before we and before we get into uh, it, I guess it, it, can I just give one big takeaway here? Um, just something yeah, I was kind of yeah. thinking about as I was I was mowing today, right? And I was just kind of thinking about, you know, what are we going to talk about when we get to the chapter? And one of the things that keeps sticking out to me is this whole idea of Rand. Um, and now it comes up a little bit more as as somewhat of a of a plot point um, of Rand not being a lord, but keeps being called a lord, right? And then when we talk about his the sword, right, and he has a sword, and now even though people said you don't look like somebody, you know, somebody who should have the sword, and everyone's just really intrigued by Rand because he's all of these things he's that on one hand he should be, but on the other hand he shouldn't be. Um, and I was just kind of thinking about, uh, you know, this and, and so many other stories where our, your characters are thrust into adulthood or thrust into filling these roles that maybe they weren't ready for. You know, we read a lot of Game of Thrones, and so I think about, you know, like Jon Snow and some of these other characters, right? That's just, it's kind mm -hmm. of the, the path that they're forced on. And, you know, we've talked about the idea of free will versus, you know, the wheel, right? And these characters mm -hmm. are part yeah. of the pattern, and maybe their their thread was something else, you know, and the last time it was the last age and all this stuff. And I just thought it was kind yeah. of interesting and in that it's, it's really, it's like, you know, um, you know, you look at Rand, who's like, I'm a sheep herder, I'm a farmer, but everyone calls him a right. lord. And well, now you and then Tom says, well, now you have this coat, right? And you're filling out, right. you know, the coat and all this stuff. And so it's all these characters who are just, you know, they have to fill the roles that they were kind of destined to fulfill is is kind yeah. of like what I just what my big kind of takeaway. And that's where it is. So where it seems like we're, we're going right. It's like, yeah, Rand 
you know, has the code and people are calling him a lord, even though he's not, but he looks the part and, you know, right. he's got he's got the sword and he's a, you know, it's a blade master and all of these things. The, you know, the so it's just it's yeah. just interesting. And it's just kind of like my big takeaway is like that's what we're starting to see is um, that's just the wheel weaves, man. And you yeah. just, oh, just yeah. got to go with it. Yeah. I mean, right. Right. I, I guess I have a follow up, you know, question for you there. Like like I, I mean, it does add sort of. um do you think it adds a layer of comedy that you have almost like some of them are reluctant to step into those shoes right. and others seem to be like very like, yes, that's what I want. I'm going for it. And then, oh, it's not what I expected. And that adds some tension and some suspense and like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Uh, and then you have someone like Rand who I always think is, I always think it's kind of funny right. just that he doesn't really know. He doesn't want this <laughs> and he's just he just keeps getting, t you know, uh, uh, you know, tied into these things. He's just doing this for Matt. He's trying to get the dagger. He's got to get the horn back and then he's right. out of here. Well, even you know? when I even when I think of like Nynaeve, right, I mean, she's in that similar that similar thing where, you know, it's, she was she was already in a tough spot by being the you know the youngest wisdom, right? Like the two rivers has ever seen. Yeah. And now she's going to go be an Aes Sedai. And so it's. It's just interesting, I think, to see these characters pass because it feels like all of them are are being forced and are now are now playing. And maybe it's the whole Taviran thing, right? They talk about how Taviran pull the yeah. the wheel around them and they influence everybody around them because it seems like all of these characters, once they are involved with them, and um, and whether it's Taviran or it's just the fact that they're on this path and you, you get involved with somebody going down that path, it'll drastically change your life. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's like Tom. I mean, I mean, I think Tom would have just been a guy who had just traveled around until he died. And that's that's kind of what it is. And Nynaeve would have just stayed in the two rivers and Rand and Egwene probably would have gotten married. And, you know, right. and, and right. they would have just stayed in the two rivers. But, you know, they got bigger, better things. Uh, that they got to. Yeah. That, that the wheels just say, no, you're going to do this. Right. It, it is kind of crazy. It makes you think about um, have you ever been walking? And this is sort of. Totally a tangent, but it, it does play into a little bit of what we see in this whole series. You know, you've been walking and, and you're somewhere you've never been before and you walk and, and literally the way it's timed up, like someone just crosses or you, or you meet at like a, whether it's a four way stop or you're right. actually um, I used to be walking on campus uh, where, where when I was in, in school and I was when I was reading the series, too, I'd be walking and I would I would cross someone. They would cross my path. And I'm just thinking, like, what are all the events that led that person to literally bump into me today, you know, it just gets you right. thinking, like, "Wow, this is crazy." Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which, which is, which is kind of funny and and, and interesting. And I think you're right. You know, uh, th these these characters, it's like they're they're being pulled in this direction, um, and it, it, that's what I think is fascinating about the portal stones and about um, going through the the trial to be accepted. Like, you start to see these alternate paths or these what ifs or these uh, the the potential or the maybe world. And that's just always kind of fascinating because sometimes, you know, we get into these conversations about like, you know, what if I would have, um, you know, I, I don't know, like what if life would have been like, you know, I dated someone different or if I would have, you know, done something different in life, you know, it would have been, it would have been kind of, Life would have been so much different, you know? It's yeah, like know. one decision yeah, can really I, change everything. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole butterfly effect thing. I mean, right. what if I what right. if I did what if I did this as a, as opposed to that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's huge. Yeah. It's just fun. It's what you know, it's what makes life exciting and everything. So, uh yeah, that's cool. That's cool. All right, well, we'll keep all that in mind. Um let's go ahead and run through we're going to start with chapter 28 and I uh, just want to kind of read through some of our outline points here. Yeah, absolutely. So, chapter 28 uh, the group chasing Fane encounter an Aiel who tells them he is looking um, for he who comes with the dawn. Chapter 29, um, Bornhold learns there are invaders on Almuth Plain. Uh, Doman is captured by them. Chapter 30, while Rand is out at out of the inn, the dark friends steal the horn back, injuring Huron just before the others arrive. Chapter 31, the group trace the horn to uh, Barthanus Manor. Rand reveals he has an invitation to a gathering the following day. 32, 
Uh, Rand and Barthanus talk at the manor. Barthanus reading a great deal into everything Rand says, which is a that's a pretty funny. It's a pretty funny chapter. Um, <laughs> right. Chapter thirty three. The group try to follow Fane through the ways, but Machin Shin is waiting for them. Chapter thirty four. Tom's lover is murdered by Gal- Galdrian's men, and he swears revenge. Fane um, integrates himself with Turek. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, yeah, quite a bit. I guess, you know, these first two chapters, so back to, like, you know, 28, and just is talking about, um, so so here we are, with, back with Perrin, Inktar, Uno, uh, and, and Varen. We're trying to pursue the Horn. We're trying to figure out where, we don't know what happened to Ran, Loyal, uh, and Huron, right? So the sniffer is gone, and we have a new sniffer, though. Right, mm-hmm. we have a new sniffer, uh, someone who can who can keep uh, keep on the trail. And I guess I want to start off with just this reading here, uh, which is Inktar, who is is I, I love his determination. He is so determined to uh, get the horn back. And he, the longer this goes on, he seems to get more like frustrated right. uh, and, and things. He definitely so in this part, he's falling back, and uh, he he goes back and he's talking to. To Perrin, and he says, you know, tell me again what the wolves said. I've told you ten times, Perrin muttered. Tell me again. Anything I may have missed. Anything that may help me find the horn. Uh, he drew in a breath. He let it out slowly. I must find the horn of Alir. Perrin, tell me again. <laughs> um, and, and so, you know, he they're desperate. And they're kind of going over what he had learned from the wolves. So Perrin learns about someone named Shadow Killer. And the wolves are kind of, you know, and this is said in this chapter that they're kind of in awe of Shadow Killer and and that uh, Fane and the Dark Friends had fallen under attack, you know. So and we kind of know what happened with that. Like, that's something we actually got in a, in a previous chapter. We, we kind of understand, um, you know, that they that they were they have lost the horn. We know Rand has it. Right. right. Um, right yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's that's interesting. And so they kind of revere. Now, Shadow Killer, that's something, uh, and actually in this batch of chapters, uh, if, you, if you've read this batch, you'll, you'll know at, at, like later on, Perrin actually uh, uses the term Shadow Killer in response, you know, when, when he's uh, approaching right. someone, you know, so it's, he flat out uh, kind of shows us who the wolves were, were talking about, because they're not like, a, I mean, to kill the shadow uh, and, and, and the wolves' mind is a good thing. That's, that's their anti-shadow. They, they fight for the light and, and uh and and so yeah, but but now it's just again it's it's all still kind of confusing. And Inktar is still wondering like, well, the horn's not with us, so where is it, and what are we gonna do? Um, and so that's sort of the setup to chapter twenty eight. Now, the big takeaway here though is the Aiel. What'd you think about this this Aiel man? And we said his name is, and I, I it's, I'm it's Urian. This. Urian. Urian. Yeah, yep. Urian. Yeah. Yeah. And he's looking for he who comes with the dawn. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the Aiel, uh, you know, just meeting them now um, again. This is the this is what I was talking about at the beginning. It's like, oh, my gosh, this is the first kind of block of chapters. where I felt like this is a little overwhelming because the world is just expanding and expanding and expanding. Yeah. I mean, right. You know, we've heard I think we've heard mention. I mean, a lot of people. Well, they keep talking about the fact that they think Rand uh is Aiel, right? And we hear about the Aiel waste, right? And yeah. all of these and and how it's like, you know, the the spine of the world, right? And it's kind of uh I guess in a in a map, um the Aiel waste is pretty northeast, right? As we kind of get to like the edge of the world um and yeah. all of that stuff. So it's kind of like over there, it's kind of in the mountains, I guess. More think more of like a desert. You've got a little mountain plain yeah. plan and, the, and then the desert. Yeah. So um yeah, so right. I mean, it's interesting because right. everyone keeps saying Rand is I is I yield. So I mean Yeah, what does that mean? And then and then and then now and we meet one. We've heard about the IEL war uh that's mentioned a lot in relationship to Kyrian, uh which we talked about in our extended edition a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now we have this new group and yeah when you something see one there's always yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Y- Urian is just the one who who they see and who they're who they're talking to, and he talks about, um, as you say, looking for uh, he who comes with the dawn, and and kind of a- at first, by the way, when they first see him, the tension just spikes because they're dangerous. They are dangerous. Um, 
and and at one point he has like a veil when they're, when they're covered up you know like that's right. kind of when they're in you know they're ready to fight yeah yeah um, yeah let me see here i have that's just some notes here uh parents yeah. sees that the aiel dresses in clothes that would blend in to rocks or earth and that he's armed with a bow a quiver of arrows a knife a buckler and three short spears yeah yeah yep exactly um let's see yeah here we go here we go so uh Inktar dismounted and walked forward, removing his helmet. Perrin hesitated only a moment before climbing down to join him. He could not miss the chance to see an Aiel close up, acting like a black-veiled Aiel. Uh, in story after story, uh, Aiel were as deadly and as dangerous as Trollocs. Some even said they were all dark friends. Uh, but Yurian's smile somehow did not look dangerous, despite the fact that he seemed poised to leap. His eyes were blue. And then this is where Perrin says, he looks like Rand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then Matt says, maybe Inktar's right. Maybe Rand is Aiel. <laughs> he says that. He's like, well, maybe he's well, right. Well, everyone keeps um, saying that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't really change anything. It's, it's still their friend. But um, now, now this is cool. So you get all these. I think one of the things that makes it kind of confusing, and because we talked about this before we started recording, is, is this example right here. Um, and, and Robert Jordan is this laying a foundation. But... Uh, Yurian will say when he sees Varen, Varen said I, he will call her a wise one. He says, hello, wise one. And, he, and he, when he, when he, when he speaks to her, he refers to her as that. So that's where we get these different names for different things and different people. I mean, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that Robert Jordan does throughout the series where we meet a creature and by one group of people, it's called this, but by another group of people, it's called this. Uh, so like, you know, we would call, uh, you know, we call them Aes Sedai, right. uh, but, you know, the IEO are going to call them wise ones. What's what's the difference? Is there a difference? I mean, do they, they I mean, again, um, like he, they'll, they'll also say Aes Sedai too. So right. they don't they don't just always say wise ones. So you start to think, ah, what does that mean? They just speak differently. And the, and the word choice that they use is different. And it's just to represent and I draw a distinction um, between cultures and countries and things right. like that. Yeah, and so. we do we do that in our world too. I mean, you know, it's like yeah. when we talk about an Ohio State Michigan football game, we call it a win, they call it a game. I mean, you know, it's just it's it's different, you know, names for different uh different things. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That was a joke. Yep. I mean, I, I mean, you know, it was it was a joke. It, I mean, any of our Michigan listeners, we know we're, we're, we're we love you guys. <laughs> We let you brow hound, do we? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, <there he> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> dark friends. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, so, okay, back to some interesting stuff happens with with this chapter, and I know we're going to take our time with it, um, just for this reason. And that, like, he who comes with the dawn is is a pretty big deal. Like, so they are looking for some individual that is prophesied. Like, these prophecies are a big deal. Um, I think it's Ingtar says that there are Trollocs. Like they've been looking for uh, a band of Trollocs and Dark Friends. And Urien kind of says Trollocs. Like his eyes almost mm. like light up. Like, oh my gosh, this is one of the things. It's a part of the prophecies. When the Trollocs come out of the blight again, we will leave the threefold land and take back our places of old. Um, there was a muttering from the mounted Shinarans. Uh, and then Urien eyed them with uh, with this pride, right? He's just sort of like, yep, okay, like, you know, so that's that's kind of cool. And then now, so what is the threefold land? You know, Matt and these guys are trying to figure out where are these guys really, right. really from, right? Yeah. yeah and like, yeah, and Urian says waste. it's the waste. Exactly, the yeah. Iowa waste, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but that's what they're looking for. And, um, you know, y Urian says that he would have killed any of any Trolloc that he saw. Uh, Inktar sh shakes his head, losing interest, but Varen spoke sharp in concentration with concentration in her voice. Um, this Rudian, uh, what, where is it? Uh, so he, sp he speaks about, uh, and I always say it kind of wrong, but, uh, R Rudian, I think is how you say mm -hmm. it. Um, and it's this place that he's brought up a couple times in, in reference to clan chiefs and to wise ones. Uh, going there, they don't speak of what they learn there, uh, and she wants to know where is it, um, how are the girls chosen to go, all of this sort of thing, and then so he says, I cannot speak of it, wise one, and so, you know, Varen being brown, Aja is very, uh, what is this new thing, and I want to learn more more about it, you know, you don't see a lot of the Aiel, so it's sort of very rare 
that they're here. And when you can learn something about them, that's sort of her big, her big takeaway. She wants to learn something um, from this Ielman. So, yeah. And they, and then, then they, they start talking and then things get kind of weird. Like where he talks about um, that, the I, that the I said, I right. Or the wise ones are supposed to slay them. Yeah. <laughs> right. And he talks about like, you know, bring, bring your lightning. Uh, and she says, yeah. yeah, I'm not, I'm not here to kill you. I'm not here to kill you. Right. Um, and then they, then they, they start to talk about like, you know, um, how could I strike at a woman who has not wedded the spear? Right. So then there's, right. they start talking about that a little bit, like the, the spear. Um, oh God, mm-hmm. not spear wives. That's a game of Thrones thing. Um, but it's, it's similar term here. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it, yeah. Those who have wedded the spear. I mean, that's yeah. so, uh, it's, it's a, it's a group and we're, we'll talk more about that later, but, um, you start to see like their tree, like maiden of the spear? one of their beliefs. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd have to look it up, honestly. Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly off the. I, I, I want to use their technical uh, name, and I don't want to use that yet because <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't come across it yet. But, um, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, yeah. What what is it? Maiden of the spear. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you brought spear wives and you threw me <laughs> with the game right. of thrones. I, well, it's, there's like it's so similar. I'm, like, oh, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm mad. I'm sitting here going, okay, how many three? I got three to four or five <laughs> fandoms in my head. <laughs> right. Oh shoot. I mean, it's like um, it's like so. It's like talking about a very similar thing. It's like hold on a second. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's something too. Like a lot of these authors again are inspired by you know um, Tolkien and and right. and then from there have derived things that are kind of similar. There's a lot of right. names and terms you're like, well, that's kind of similar. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're, they're talking about, um, he's talking about like how he would not uh, strike a woman or he would not attack a woman uh, who was not wed to the spear. And so that's sort of the idea. Like if you are, well, that's different, you know, and maybe I would. Um, and so that you start to learn, well, maybe there's a faction like this in, in, in the Aiel or, or among the Aiel. Um, and I actually think that reference has been made a couple times before. And that's, what's fascinating is that like, as we've moved through this first book, you know, when we moved through the first book, there were things that were said that, you know, uh, connected to stuff way later on, but it was just mentioned in passing. Right. And it'll continue to be, to be mentioned like this reference to, to wise ones, you know, is mentioned here. Okay, cool. What well, we, we call it makes sense because we think the Aes Sedai are wise, uh, sure. I mean, actually, why wouldn't people in Andor call them wise ones too? They're they're wise and they they know a lot and they can do things. Um, but we'll learn more about that term later on, you know. Right. But for right now, you could pass by it and not even think about it. So I don't know. It's just sort of that, as you say, it's that overwhelming sort of like world building. Like here we go. Very quickly, we're learning about this new group of people and and their their demeanor, their customs, and things like that. So yeah, but he would not attack uh, uh, like an Aes Sedai. And also then, yeah, it seems like there's um, that another thing that's been prophesied, perhaps, is that the Aes Sedai would, if they, if they fail in their service to them, would be slayed. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah, and then like so bring, it's bring sort down of like, your lightning. Yeah. And, and you know, um, I wouldn't attack you, but I would dance with the lightning. You know, I would try to, to avoid it and stuff, but I'm not going to actually do anything to, to harm or hurt you, even if the Aes Sedai were attacking. Like, that's kind of crazy, right? I mean... For these people that are like a warrior-like people, um, and that are considered so dangerous that the that the Janarans are like you know on guard from the start, just on just based on one of these guys, and you can't even see you know if there are others, and they're worried that there are you know where there, where there's one there there are, there are more. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Um, uh, yeah. So so then uh, Yuri and they go on. Uh, Per and Matt uh, talk talk uh, about Urian, and they discuss the possibility that they think they start to think out loud. Could Rand be he who comes with the dawn? They're starting to make these connections that well, he's I he seems he looks Aiel, and actually, you know, even in just seeing some of the Aiel right. starts to make sense to them. They kind of see why Inktar and others would make that connection. Once you've seen an Aielman and then you see Rand, you're sort of like, huh, yeah, all right, those guys look like they Belong, are related. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so, so anyways, yeah, that's basically chapter 28 though. We learn more about this, uh, culture and we can go more in depth later on as we get more from, uh, the Aiel and we learn more about them. Uh, we will, we'll end up coming back to this. So we'll hear more about them, but I don't know that we, I can't remember if we actually encounter them later on in this book or not, but yeah. 
but I know, yeah, we will later on for sure. So okay, chapter okay. twenty nine. We also want to we want to dive a little bit deeper into this one too, right? Yeah, this one we want to dive a little deeper in as well. So this is, um, yeah, Bornhold learns there are invaders on Almuth Plain. Doman is captured by them. Yeah, and I love I, so <laughs> Bale Doman is what. You remember, um, he's the ship captain, right? So when mm-hmm. Rand and Matt kind of get split up and, and they're right. with uh, Tom Marilyn and they, they get on the ship and he's got that funny, you know, accent. Um, it's uh, Michael Kramer does a great job, I think, reading re- reading uh, his his character. But he's a ship captain who's who's moving around and um, he is over near Almuth Plain and is pursued. Now, that's the second point of view in this chapter. Uh, first, it starts off with just Bornhold, uh, who's a, who's you know one of the white cloaks white cloak, yeah. with his guard, yeah, and they're there trying to figure out what's what's going on. There's been all these rumors, um, and all with Blaine. Just just real quick, I think this is the yeah. this is this is pretty far east actually. So we're this again that we're jumping all around the world here. I mean, it's like way east. It's almost all, all the way on the excuse me west, way west. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Wait, wait. It's almost right, on the opposite it's almost on side the, of almost yeah. on the ocean. Yeah, because two rivers is kind of like in the middle of our of our world, and then they everything goes kind of northeast. Um, yeah, but now we're we're way over here. Yeah, I love it because you do have to pull up a map almost to, to kind of understand where characters are. It, it th- this is one of those um, series where it really does help to you've you've heard about this, but where is it at? Even though they mention. Uh, there are words to describe its location in relationship to where our characters are and other cities that we've been to and stuff. Uh, it's nice just to go kind of see like, yeah, it's way over there. And our character Bell Doman is over there. The white cloaks are over there doing something. Um, and we come across the Shanchen and it's interesting. They speak, they're hearing from, uh, you know, villagers and different people that, this is called the return like the Shan Chen are calling this um uh, this is something they're 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 terming um the return and it seems like they pretty quickly have come into Almuth Plain and, and kind of taken over right mm-hmm. I mean they're they've moved in and pretty pretty well set up you know camp um so so yeah uh, there's yeah, they, it, yeah. another interesting yeah yeah, yeah born yeah just real quick here uh yeah they're called the Shan Chan right or the Regal Regal Regale Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, those who come home uh, are those who come before. Yeah. Yep. Yes. And so what who are they? They they seem foreign, right? They're, they're not from this continent, mm-hmm. from from this area. It's not like they're one country that invaded um, another on this continent, because we've heard about wars and turmoil and stuff between kingdoms and, and vying for power. Um, but these individuals have come, you know, kind of across the, from over the sea. Right. Um, and that's actually what people are saying. Is that one of the things they bring up here is that many people think that this is Arter Hawkwing's armies yeah, returning. returned from over the sea. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're returning, right? Um, yeah, and the Bornhold, Bornhold himself doesn't know where the Shan Chen come from, right? And he requests information, Um his request for information from the sea folk have been met with silence, right? So then you have uh, survivors of the Shan Chan invasion had spoken of the men who come into battle riding monsters and bring Aes uh, Sedai to rend the earth. So, I mean, this it's a very odd kind of group here, uh, the Shan Chan, right? Like speaking in prophecies and and yeah, yes. definitely def- and uh, Arter Hawkwing's armies returning. It's like they almost feel at, like, you know, very out of place. I mean, considered everything else that's going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and the White Cloaks are up, upset by this. Um, you start to actually see some factions inside of the White Cloaks. So uh, you have what are called like questioners. Right. Um, which seems to be like the questioners seem to have sort of like a lot of of power um they're often told to obey the questioners you know if you were to capture let me give you an example like and they brought this up before like they they all they often mention like you don't want to be turned over to the questioners just because like uh the way in which they question you they're questioning you to see if you're a dark friend you mm-hmm. know and they're always the, you know the white cloaks are always looking for dark friends all the way back to Berlon, right there <laughs> when they run into rand and uh and then parents had run-ins with them um and so they kind of pop up from 
from time to time. But you see Bornhold is struggling a little bit with the idea that he wants to kind of rush in. He, this is an attack, and they've moved into this area. They're on Almuth Plain, and they realize that the Shanchen have uh, have attacked and have, uh, have swept in pretty quickly. And he's ready to go drive them out, but yet he's getting orders to slow and to not do that. And it doesn't seem, you know, I think he, he questions it a little bit. And it's even hinted in this chapter that, there's a there's a clear like tension between him and the orders from the questioner, um, from Jake and Cardin, which is which is in- interesting. So, like what you know who? Um, by the way, Cardin is the the hand of the light, right? He, he right. um, get kind of uh, yeah, who got yeah he he commands uh yeah uh Jake and Cardin who guides the hand of the light who commands that Bornhold stop his advance on Falme you know Falm and concentrate on rooting out the dark friends on Almuth Plain. Yeah, so it's it's like in some of these villagers um so, so there's a lot of different villages as you're approaching sort of the major cities and stuff, you know, that's where they're being asked or they're being told to kind of look for dark friends in these areas and find them versus going uh, straight on to face the Shanchen and to see what really is is going on here, and that just doesn't seem right to Bornhold. So he's sort of like, "What what are we doing here?" Um, so we learn a little bit about the White Cloaks. We learn a little bit about the Shanchen and sort of what they're just that they're that they're this this invading force. There's rumors that there are monsters that they have special monsters um, that can do things that we're not used to seeing, you know, right. other creatures and animals do over here. Uh, they, they even seem to be able to have like powers, uh, perhaps Aes Sedai with them. And first of all, the White Cloaks hate, you know, the, the Aes Sedai. They're very anti-channeling uh, and the power and things like that. So this is, I mean, everyone on this, on this uh, you know, this plane is, is a dark friend as far as they're concerned. Like all this, all this, uh, you know, whatever this is going on, it all sounds very... Uh, shadow like and they're and they're not happy uh, about it but uh, yeah so so that's pretty much it there um so yeah yeah so just so just real quick here because you know we, we've been you know we've been we've talked about Tarvalin and Kyrian right and um, like the Armorland Sea and all of this stuff so uh, as you, as now that we're really kind of expanding here in in the in the world yeah right uh, so how far does that reach really hit because if you look at a map here right and so you know now we're, we're we're pretty far east um uh who's is somebody kind of like another seat of power over here or uh yeah so here's the thing let me see if i can find it um real quick like is barrelon is barrelon kind of the well so so again you you look at um a map where you have like sort of all the countries um you're right and, and you've got kind of let me put my book down here because we're not we're not in like andor you know anymore I mean, that's kind of like an archirian right see if you can find a city called uh amador or um, amadicia like on that map there uh yes it's towards the west i believe um i have to go pull up a map myself but i get what you're saying like who has influence where um because the the children of the light or yeah so uh, amador amador is like um south right like they're pretty south so you got like a big mountain ridge um that goes kind of through so you've got like so if you go north of it you've got Barlon and then you got some other town and some of these towns we have not at all talked about in the in the book i just i just have a map up here yeah um qatar i don't we've not, we've never we've never been there yet um right right there, right so, and so then there's one called like elmora mm-hmm. and and some of these other ones and then this map has steadings point uh put out on it which yeah is kinda, which is cool which is, which cool. is cool yeah uh sh- shout yeah. out to loyal it says, <laughs> is it is it a rod a rod doman right i'm guessing so that, those are like the old names all right doman yeah so if you look over right. R- right um where we're at right now is is falma right there on the on the very edge over by the wheel of time sign so if anyone looks up sort of just a regular the the what's known as like map yeah like grand of, land yeah. map um, you, you'll, you'll know what we're talking about. So Toman head there is sort of this peninsula that sticks out. And this is where, uh, you know, from, if you look at Almuth plain, see how it stretches clear over here. It's actually this open plain, um, just on the other side of that mountain Ridge. You can, you right. can see it kind of fa- faintly describe, you know, um, there. So, and then just even further West of it is, is Toman head. 
uh, and then and then Falma. So those are three names right. that we've been given we, in this book. We've we so far. Yeah, we yeah. and we've heard we've heard Toman Head quite. I think we hear Toman Head in the first book mm-hmm. a, a few a few times. Well, yeah. and yeah, it's something that Fane has talked to us about too. Um, and, and so this this whole region is a place that that has been hinted at, and we've been hearing about these things. So now we're here with with the White Cloaks. And um, we're, we're kind of trying to figure out, like, okay, what? Uh, and you're right, by the way. I, I totally forgot where where uh, Amador and Amadicia are at. Yeah, they are they are right down there south, which actually makes a lot of sense in comparison to Tarvalin. But um, so that's sort of, and I don't think it really, eh, yeah, those those are well. So let's go back to your original question, which was the the powers, right, and the, and the seats of power. Right. And I don't think. This is, and I have to think back to what's been said in the books um, up to this point, but I'm pretty right. sure that, like, we know for for example that uh, Queen Morgays is the she's the queen of Andor, and we've now right. heard in Kyrian that there is a king, King Galdrian, and in this batch of chapters, we've learned about um, some you know Deus Damar going on there. We've heard about the the game of basically the game of thrones right you know we're trying to uh, play this this political game so you have each of those places and before you know in the first book we were up in uh Faldara um Falmorin is the is the is the capital there and that's that's Shinar and it is its own kind of country it has its own leader um just like you know Andor and Kyrian so that's interesting if you look at sort of the green name so you, you look at Andor and right. then you go over to Kyrie, and you can see that you go north of Kyrie, and you have Sh- the um, Sh- Shinar. Um, those are sort of your countries, if you will. And gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And so it's kind of hard to see, but there is. You can see the roads. There are other maps that will actually show you the borders to all of those uh, countries, uh, and just so you can kind of see like like the borders, um, which is interesting. And so yeah, those are your various seats of power. Um, and as you can see, if you look at any map, I, I don't think it's it's really going to spoil anything. It just shows you, wow, we got a lot to cover. There's a lot more, uh, you know, coming. And there's there's, there's well, some, absolutely. Yeah. Well, there's you know, there's so much, but plenty more books. There's so many more books. Yeah, right, right. But it is interesting to stop and think for a second, though, who has influence and sway and power? And it's sort of like the way I, if you want to think in, and this is just for Sir Matt and anyone who who listens to um, Ben the Knee, Game of Thrones stuff. You know, in Westeros, you have the Citadel, the Maesters who are or at Old Town. Right. Right. And Old Town is its own thing. It's its own seat. You got the high towers there, but you also have the Maesters. So Tarvalin's kind of like, you know, kind of like that, except for they've got power and stuff. Right. And and they're kind of these advisors and, and things. So we know that in Andor, in Camelon, we have an Aes Sedai advisor. Like openly, they're like that queen is supports or people know that the Aes Sedai um, advise there and and help out and that's pretty neat Rand actually runs into one of them so who sees a lot of different things around Rand that was in book one so the Aes Sedai more just have influence they they now Tarvalin is their place you're not coming into Tarvalin and doing diddly squat there that's they they run that and they're powerful and that's that is what it is sort of its own thing um, but each of these other places have, you know, yet kings and queens um, and high lords and things like that. But uh, and this is where like more rain. We've heard often that uh, in, in, at the end of the first book and beginning of the Great Hunt that she has been out doing her own thing and she's been all over the place. Right. She hasn't been back to Tarvalin in a long time. Well, what is she doing? She's about her own business. She's looking into things. She's studying, um, advising, helping, uh, doing research and things like that. And that's just sort of what she's allowed to do. You know, she's not like assigned to a, a, a specific place. Although in Andor, in Camelon, we do have a situation where um, you have a queen who was assigned and, you know, there is an advisor there who is who is sent to kind of advise the queen. And that's that's a, a cool thing. So as for the White Cloaks, though, where we've seen them, we've seen them in Berylon, uh, we've seen them over near Camelin. We've seen them in Camelin, right? Walking around. And that's when we get into the whole uh, white versus red thing. So we see them in different places. They kind of patrol and they move and um, they are, they're anti tarval and anti, they call them witches, right? And mm-hmm. they're very much pursuing dark friends and they're, they're pushing for people to live in the light. 
Um, but they're a military unit. They're, they're actually, I always say, I keep saying white cloaks, but they're children of the light. All right. Let me make sure I make that clear. Right. Um, and this is what they say. So at one point um, in, in this batch of chapters, well, I, uh, Dane Bornhold, who we're talking about right now, will say that the children have authority wherever the light is. So it doesn't matter where it's at. They believe that they have authority because they are fighting for the light and they are children of the light. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So it's just kind of, yes, it they, they, they have this free sort of like, you're not going to question them. They're making sure they're looking, their whole purpose is to seek out like, you know, dark friends and stuff. They're just this military right. independent kind of just, organization. So they're going to, they're going to do whatever they want to do. Yeah. But it is kind of confusing, right? I mean, like, like what the heck are they doing? It is. Yeah. Now I, I just, yeah, I just found I just found a new map that kind of it uh, shows you everything that you were kind of talking to me with. Oh, here's all the different countries. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, it's just, and it's a lot of this stuff is kind of like, okay, hold on a second. Like, you know, Right, because or, uh, like like because yeah. every time I stop and look at a map, I'm like, oh my god, hold on, this is where the two rivers is. We go all the way from there <laughs> to all the way to here. Now we're kind of back here, and it's like everyone's. But that's what happens, I guess, when you go through the ways and you use portal stones, you travel all over the place. Right, and you're just like you know, where are we at? Yeah, right, exactly, and that is sort of why uh, y y it does seem like the world builds pretty quickly, and it's almost Fast. like it's like exponential yeah. growth. Yeah, and and it is, I guess, if we don't stop for a second and and sort of think about. Like, this is why you do rereads. This is why people, I, and I, I, I will say this boldly, I know no one reads this series and has it, you know, down like the back of their hand after one reading. It just is not, I don't, if you are that person, come let me know. <laughs> and I will love, I would love to talk to you. But I, 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 it's, it's, I've had to read it numerous times and there's still so many things I miss. Right. So many things I, I, I am like, oh my gosh, that makes sense or I'm seeing it more. So yeah, because it's confusing that the, why are the white cloaks? The white cloaks seem like they're everywhere, man. Like they're all over the place. And yeah. Yeah, why I mean, is that? Fear of influence is, yeah. is pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's something. Uh, it's a good question. I'm I'm actually glad you asked it because like it's they, they don't really sit in one spot. And I guess right. if you because like once we leave, Sh you know, Shinar and we leave the Shinarans, they're in this band with us. We've got Uno, we've got Ingtar and others, um, Asima, and we're, we're moving around with them. But that's because we're pursuing the Horn of Alir. Like that's that band right. that has left and they're they're looking for that. Uh, and they've been put on this quest. Otherwise, it's very unusual for them. You know, why would you leave that? They, they need to be, you know, they're, they're fighting against the blight and they're they're looking to guard their uh their, their you know their country their their cities and, and things like that so um yeah so when we see people in places that they aren't supposed to be that's interesting so like the aiel you know traveling over the spine and in in and around kyrian doing something what's going on who are these people right. you know and now we see exactly yeah right why are they even uh you know, now anybody can really you know they, there's merchants and people you know traveling and, and stuff like that what was cool about um well, I guess we'll get to that later. I, 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 when we're at Tarvalin, uh, we start to understand that that's a real kind of, um, and, and this is something that Egwene um, and Nynaeve have already started to realize. So just that there's there's a, a lot of people coming in and out of there. There's a lot of different countries and, and stuff uh, re represented there. So Okay. All right, man. Hey, thanks. Thanks for the breakdown. Cause, yeah, hey, it's and like, I oh my gosh, yeah. The hardest part in doing all of that, though, is trying to make sure that I'm not, like, really skipping wet, spoiling like, spoiling it, anything. Right. Yeah, because that's the hardest part. I don't want, like, I, I think if you were, to, if we had, if we stopped for a second, we look back over, you know, uh, in, in this book and in the first book, and we just looked at the White Cloaks, and we only examined that aspect of these books so far, it, a lot of that would have been picked up. Like, a lot of that would have been easier to see, but we're going and these big chunks and we're just trying to consume it all. And it's just going to keep coming up again and again and again. Right. And it'll be reinforced as we, as we keep reading. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Once, once we move out of, once we move out of the first read of this and we move into <laughs> some re a reread, it'll be a little bit. Easier Absolutely. To, yeah. To kind of put this up. Okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's, let's kind of plow, uh, plow through here. Um, uh, so, you know, kind of some bigger takeaways here of chapters uh you know we, we still got a handful of chapters to get to you know so now we're we're as we're moving past kind of bornhold right uh, and we're moving back into rand and the and the group right so uh you know chapter 30 that's when rand uh, is out at the end the dark friends steal the horn back and urine gets injured yeah it gets injured man i i, I love urine i absolutely love him and it, it yeah they, they he's injured they've got the horn um this is such a bummer Right. I mean, you have to be like you had it. 
right? Did you think this was coming, yeah. by the way? I mean, did you think they were actually going to lose? I mean, like, you know, I know we talked about it a little bit at the at the end of our last episode there, um, back on the first, but I mean, you know, because Rand is out and all of a sudden, you know, Trollocs and you're in, you're in with the Illuminators and Selene shows up and it's like, what the heck? Uh, and then they're worried about right. Huron, you know, him, him being attacked. But I mean, come on, like when, when you first get it, you're like, wow, that was quick, right? I mean, that's sort of like, because remember this, that you're thinking this whole book, we're going to be pursuing the horn. We're not going to get it until the very end or something, but we get it. <laughs> we actually get it and then we lose it. Right. Uh, which I think is something I didn't expect when I first read it. I was like, well, what the heck is this book about then? We just, like, this is this great hunt and Rand has the horn and he's with this girl, Celine, all is well right well we lose it you know come on yeah and that also shows you i think like rand is is um well you know meeting tom yeah like like just the excitement to go meet up with tom and leave that unguarded and to not he seems to almost let his guard down a little bit just because he's excited because his friend is alive and he's able to go speak with him and stuff so you know what i mean like that yeah might have cost him you know a little bit well clearly it does um, it does. Yeah. It, yeah, it does. So, um, yeah, I mean, gosh, there's just, there's so much, there's just so much to take away, to take away here. I, you know, I, it's like, I know, I know it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. And so, well, and, and the big takeaway for me is, you know, well, again, right there, they, they lose the horn. Um, and, right. and that, um, they've got to figure out what to do now. So they, they have to figure out where that horn is gone. And meanwhile, again, as, as we say, day is tomorrow is going on around them and, and everyone's watching them go and in Rand, and out. And Rand, is, Rand, Rand just gets, you know, uh, so sick of Deus Demar too, right? He's like, you know, yeah. I don't care about how they think. You know, if I do this, then they think this, and I do this. And it's just so funny because, like, while, while all and this happens throughout all of these chapters, right? You've got, like, Loyal there, and he's just kind of like, wow, Rand, you're, like, pretty good at this. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, so ridiculous. Right, right. Yeah, so. Um, but Huron is hurt. And they have to, so you got to, they have to do two things. They got to track down the horn and they also right. have to get him some help. Um, so, and here's, again, remember we said earlier in this, in this episode, we were talking about how you call different people, different things. So they come across someone called like a reader um, who would be the equivalent to a wisdom. So it's just because we're in Kyrie and they call that person something different. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. essentially what Nynaeve was back in the two rivers and, um, herbs and healing and stuff like that because Huron is is very hurt so they're trying to get him some help but that person is called something different so even when Rand is asking for help do you have a wisdom what are you talking about you know what's a wisdom right and oh you right. mean you mean this and then so boom off off we go and we're gonna find uh that that person I think it one thing that does is it shows you how separated these places are and how isolated some of these kingdoms and nations may be from one another too for, for there not yeah. to be a lot of that knowledge uh, between them or for, for there not to be like all of the, you know, why aren't we, why aren't more of them, you know, called wisdom here and then, or reader over there and stuff like that. It's, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, but it shows you just how big and how vast, I guess, this, this world is. So uh, at the end though, Perrin and Matt uh, and Inktar show up and Rand uh, loses it a yeah, little bit. You came, yeah. You came too late. <laughs> Yeah, so he, he's a little bit like, uh, all right, you know, well, that's yeah, this, that's yeah, this is where we this is where we start to get a little bit of tension, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. it seems like well, it seems like the tension come comes and goes, right? Uh, you know, later, um, you know, you jump a little bit ahead, like they get, you know, Matt and Matt kind of tells Rand off a little bit, like I'm, we're done with this kind of like servant business. <laughs> like, oh yeah, kinda, they they yeah. get into yeah, well, because the whole the tension between. Like the idea that Rand seems to be among, like he's built up as a lord, right? And right, and he's seen as such. And it's sort of like, you know, Matt's are like, wait, what? I mean, come on, like, they, like because they know who he is. Um, they also know, you know, his secret and stuff too. And that's what they were discussing with with the Aielman. But like, come on, I mean, they're looking around almost in disbelief that Rand is getting all of this. And there might be a little bit of jealousy there, you know, like especially when they go. Uh, in search of the horn and so we can jump to that we can kind of come back to some of this stuff where th their chapter um 31 really they're just tracking down the horn to barthanis right. in, in his manner and kind of right. plotting like you know what are we going to do and this is where varon really steps in and helps them come up with a plan and they start to figure out how to play this this game and what to do who to send who not to send and and you're right there is a lot of tension because inktar is like he's desperately like 
we have to move now. We have to go get the horn right. now. It could be ten days. It could be it's days away. You know? It's a big deal. Yeah. It's ab- absolutely. Yeah. We get. Yeah. We get, it's the task I was. I was given. I got to go give it back. Yeah. I mean, there, it is. And there is still that Rand kind of Inktar like kind of. Now, I don't want to say power struggle, but I think Inktar is just at an odd spot because he's given the command, and so sometimes he's like, you know, I have the command, and then other times he's like, well, Rand he. Rand kind of takes it and right, which is you know yeah, so yeah. there is there is kind of that now you have Varen there so you know they're running around with an Aes Sedai right. which as we get to Tom and so this there's kind of nobody really knows who to yeah, who, who's in charge to look to who's in charge yeah yeah that's a, that's a great point yeah like like who are they supposed to kind of um, right yeah yeah you know trust and also there's this information who has what information because Varen has information right. that Rand needs Huron then lets him know hey we also have an invitation like from the king like. Rand is secretly in this right. in this game, uh, in, the, in, right. in the great game, and Varen's like, "What?" You know, um, so they're all they all have tidbits of information that they need to share and collaborate together, and, and kind of work on this. So, I guess to kind of jump right to it, um, if we go to, well, chapter thirty two is where Rand and Barthanis are talking. Yeah, so we just jump right to the manor. I mean, they come up with a plan, right. and as you say, Matt is going to be Rand's servant <laughs> which sets right. really well with him you know he's very happy right yeah right I re- right yeah so yeah so yeah so ran right so th- so ran starts talking to barthanis is kind of introducing himself here's who i am right you know yeah it ran uh matt you know if i can if if ran can be a lord i can put on a fa- i can put a fancy coat too right you know mm-hmm. um and so they they kind of formally introduce themselves and then uh this is you know totally deus de mar being played here Rand is talking with uh you know, Barthanis, he's asking him a lot. Of, I mean, he has this guy's got a lot of questions, right? He says, you know, and there are a lot of questions we've heard before, right? Well, hold on a second. You look like you're Aiel, but you say you're from, you know, from from somewhere else. Right. And, you know, but you, and you've also got a sword. And then, again, how, it, Rand says, I'm less than a year old, which Rand thinks is a silly thing to say, but it's what Land told him to say. So he says, I mean, he says that right in the book. He just yes. Says, well, it's what Rand, it's, it's what Land told me to say, so that's what I'm saying. Yes. Um, and, as, and the guy's like, oh, okay. I mean, so people generally know what that means. Right. That's uh, a term so that he understood. Yeah. It's a, ter- it's a, it's a, it's a term that he, under- that he understands, regardless of how how ridiculous he thinks he thinks it is um which he still finds interesting um and so it's just i mean that's kind of how this you know you know i did not know that the anderman played the great game so well right that, <laughs> yeah the, that he that he plays this um yeah that's and funny. then he says yeah. you know he wonders if he is borderland trained or warder trained which i thought was an interesting um question he says, i've heard of the i Ander- Ander and Royal Line um, has almost Aiel coloring. Uh, Rand denies any connection to either of them. Uh, he says, you know, and then Barthanis says, you've given, you've given me much to think on, right? Uh, and then Rand, you know, while Rand's walking around with the nobles, he thinks that Deus de Nar, um, and how he has no idea how well how he has played it. Like, he has no idea how well he's played it, but I think Rand's actually playing it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, this is where he sees, uh, he spots Tom. Right. Tell yes. A, telling a story of the great hunt. Yes, exactly. And that's actually an interesting point. Once he's able to speak with Tom, Tom kind of says, um, you know, he, he, he basically says, you told me you were clear of Aes Sedai. Uh, half the talk tonight here is of the Endoran Lord appearing with no warning and an Aes Sedai at his side. Uh, Barthanis and Galdrian, uh, you've let the White Tower put you in the cooking pots this time. And so he's, you know, he's saying like, you know, and that was the big thing is that Tom was glad to hear that he had been on his own. He was away from more rain and he had gotten out from, from, from the Aes Sedai. Cause Tom, uh, I mean, he just didn't like, like he doesn't, he doesn't like the Aes Sedai, right? It, yeah, it's I mean, more, just, it's more that he doesn't like when the Aes Sedai take a special interest in young men. Like, 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 like and it's, it, it goes back right. to some of his past experiences. And so he's worried. Right, he's just a little family. bit like, Oh, I right. don't, that worries me that you guys are going to get into that this might not go well. So he wants to be well, there to kind mean, of protect it, and take care of him, yeah. Right. And he his last run in with the Aes Sedai gave him a limp, you know? I mean, now he's got <laughs> a, now he's he, now he's got a limp, yeah. right? He's, yeah. He's yeah, because up, of so. all the yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so this is um right. So this is where uh Tom or or this is where Rand kind of runs into those women, right? You know, the women that are trying to, try to oh my get gosh. with them, right? And yeah. He's like, he's like, Tom, I just need to get away. I need to get away from these women, right? Um, Tom warns him, you know, that's a, that he says, he tells Tom that uh, uh, Bertanis is a dark friend. Tom says, you know, that's a pretty dangerous uh, 
accusation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's yeah, like he, he needs to kind of get away here. And and the, remember the whole reason they're here is they're searching for the horn and for the dagger. And you know, it's like, okay, they, they bring Matt because Matt can kind of sense the dagger. And then Huron can maybe sniff out some of these if there's, you know, um some some misdoings and stuff. So Rand's gotta go in here and, and do all of this while his servant and others are kind of uh, doing their searching and stuff, but Rand actually now needs out of this game, and they need to to you know excuse themselves. And once a, once somebody finds something, right? The plan is, uh, I think Matt kind of uh, pretends like he got hurt or something, or one of the servants, right. I can't remember which one it is, like gets hurt, and so he has to go kind of figure out what's what's wrong with his with his serving man, you know, um, which which is interesting. But yeah, so that's the whole idea too, is that they're in here looking for. Uh, the horn and trying to figure out what's going on and why is it at Barthanus's manor, right? Um, exactly. Yeah, which is which is kind of kind of scary. This is something Inktar said earlier, and I forgot to bring it up, but like when it's it's you know when they realize that it's gone to Barthanus's manor, it's hard for Inktar to believe that like someone of his level, I guess, or whatever, well, like like his his um right would be associated with dark friends or be a dark friend himself. And that's where Varen kind of says that, you know, e even those that are in these seats of power um, are, are also susceptible to the, you Absolutely. Know, the dark one. And, and I think it's because I, I think the idea is that you, you think that the only reason you would ally yourself with the dark one is so that if you were in this lowly position where you didn't have much and you wanted to get more out of life, you wanted to basically make a deal with the devil if you will, and sell your souls so that in return you can get riches, wealth, and fame, and all this kind of stuff. So if you already have that, why would you do it, right? Right. But that's the thing with greed and power. It just never ends, right? It just, it, yeah, it never ends, and it, it, yeah. just, you always want, you always, always want more. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, all right. So chapter 33, this is where the group try to follow Fane through the ways, but a Machin Shin uh, is waiting for them. Remember, we ran into Machin Shin last time. Right. Uh, and we went into the ways, right? Yes, yes. Um, and so, so here we go. So Huron is kind of um, he takes Rand down. Um, that, that once they once they get away from the main party, and and they're able to kind of figure out like they've tracked this down to uh, a way gate, and they know that that uh, the dark friends went that direction. So they're going to go there, and the idea is that they're going to maybe pursue them, right? Or at least at least we know where it's at. And as they get down there, they're kind of deciding what to do. Um, you know, like like what you know, are are we going to actually go in to the way gate? Uh, Loyal and Matt are there, and there's a lot of reasons to not go in in into the ways, which he will remind them, uh, you know, of again. So so that's um, it's dangerous, man. It's dangerous, right? And it it's, it's been dangerous since Moraine took them through. They're not stable. And uh, Machin Shin is, is a bad black wind yeah. that, is, that, that will kill you. I mean, it's, right. it's no joke, not something to, to take lightly. So, yeah, so here we are. Um, they, they talk about just, you know, getting these, these devices back. Rand explains that uh, he put the chest, that he put in the chest with the horn, um, the dagger, right? He puts it there mm -hmm. and, and hoping that uh, it would, you know, keep it safe. Huron then leads them to the gardens where they walk. Uh, Rand thinks of how Huron won't be able to smell dark friends among Barthanus' servants. Huron points out a walled enclosure in the garden and tells them that this is the place where the Trollocs went. And this is when Loyal, being near there, can sense that uh, waygate, being an Ogier, and that these were built for Ogier um, as sort of a favor that that men who had lot who and this is again this has already been covered back when um during the breaking of the world when they sought steadings to get away from the madness that was consuming them this is sort of a gift that they gave to the ogier they created these way gates in which you can travel um you know great distances in, in a short amount of time now the other thing too that loyal is always looking for and he's always trying to find are these groves and so he says you know i told you this was um, I told you all this was an Ogier Grove. So at one point, you remember how, I mean, he's much older too. 
and that he's studied, he's done a lot of reading, and he has sort of gone out looking for these ancient groves in these places that were um, precious and sacred to the Ogier. You know, I, I often think it's like kind of um, like in Game of Thrones, like the children of the forest and and their uh, white trees, right? And and right. so, you know, the, the just how sacred they are and like we don't want to cut them down and how dare you cut them down and that would that would anger uh, someone. So it is, you know, loyal is kind of distraught that they, um, that they're hard to find and that they're not what they once were. So, okay. Um, now this is where we get to the big deal. So we're right there at the way gate and we realize that the black wind is actually waiting for them. So they go to open it and they actually decide to pursue the dark friends through this way gate and they can't do it. They can't do it. Yeah. Did you get did you get a sense? What did you think? Like like the evil behind this wind. You know, we kind of get a little bit of it in the first book, but I think we really start to understand. Well, the, the, in the yeah. first time, it's it's more just that it, it's it's all kind of happening really fast, and they're just kind of scared about it, and it's just kind of exp explained what it is, and they're just kind of running away from it, right? But this yeah. time, it's, it seems a little bit different because the last time it was just we didn't really know was it a, is it a they didn't really explain it, right? Is it a monster? Is it, it was just it's just the black wind? Yeah. Um. This time it's like, oh no, maybe this thing is kind of it's like a creature more than just kind of like something that happens inside of the ways. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, and it, and it definitely seems. This is where I, I think you get into Robert Jordan. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Varen starts to explain a little bit, right? She says, um, yeah, no one can constrain the black wind to do anything. Um. And since nobody knows what the Machin Shen actually is, they cannot do anything to it or with it. Ingtar believes that, you know, we've lost the horn forever. The horn is lost. I am lost. But uh, Rand uh, might be able to do something about it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And and so, you know, the, um, I think, I guess one thing I want to I kind of highlight here is that um, that this wind is this is one of those uh, areas where you, you look at like what age level uh, are these books and, and what, who are they written for? Like, this is a dark moment. Like this is a dark, bad wind that talks about some real, and it just seems like it's, it's mutterings and stuff were very um, like sickening, you know, blood so sweet, so sweet to drink the blood. Uh, and, and, and also then murmuring Rand's last name, Althor, Althor. Uh, and it just, it, it, a lot of times you hear really nasty stuff coming out of the black wind. And it seems like it's numerous voices. And so, I, I, you know, we don't really know exactly. Like, it's, it's just a mystery, you know, and it's just this evil, evil presence right. uh, that, we, that we really can't. Well, as Varen, as you said, Varen says we can't combat it. So, yeah, we're, 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 so what do we do, right? So at this point, we can kind of, we, like, we, we're going to move to Tom and, and him, you know, he was, we left him kind of doing his Gleeman thing and he's right. going to end up going back uh, to his room and be kind of, done with this he's stepping away from it again he didn't want to be involved with Aes Sedai he still cares about Rand and 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 the boys and stuff but they are off doing their own thing they come down here they're stopped by the black wind now we shift back over to chapter 34 where uh Tom unfortunately is yeah. still wrapped up in all of this yeah so this is the chapter you know where Tom's Tom's lover is murdered, right, by a uh, Galdrian man and swears revenge, right? And then we also have the Padan Fane, um, the Padan Fane, Padan Fane point of view. Yeah, you know, uh, this is just, it, it's, it, I, now more than ever, you can see why Tom has such a disdain for the Aes Sedai because of all of this, all of these, you know, just from his history and now being wrapped up with the, the boys and stuff like that. Again, it seems like when he's wrapped up with them, things are going bad, right? Cause once he was before Rand came back into his life, things were starting to look good, right? He's got a, he's got a girl, he's making money. Everything's kind of, you know, back to be back to being good. But now they come back around and here comes, you know, a lot of dark friends and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and actually one thing I, cause I always think as we're going through these, um, these episodes, what do I want to talk about in extended edition? And it kind of kind of happens naturally as we go through this. But I actually really do like like Tom is back. He's back in a big way. This is a pretty big deal. Remember, we were talking earlier about like fate, free will, choices, things that happen in life that drive you down a certain path. And it is just it, it really sucks because 
Um, I think I always say Dina, maybe it's Dana, um, the, his, his girl his, that, that he's with right. here is, that's killed, uh, is, you know, I mean, the, the innkeeper is sort of like, can't, you know, can't believe that this girl would fall for Tom and he's charming and he's whatever, but, but she loved him and he loved her and they were right. going to, he was going to turn her into like a, a female Gleeman, you know, and he was teaching mm-hmm. her like all this kind of stuff. And you very quickly, because we like Tom so much, we like her and we like that this is something good that's happening for him. And as you said, like he wants to stay out of all of this, this, it, it, you know, he seems like a guy who just doesn't want, uh, he, although he's skilled in the ways of Deus Damar and he can play the great game and he seems to have some going all the way back to Camelin, uh, we, we heard about sort of his role there in Camelin. We heard about that from the innkeeper there uh, at, at, at the Queen's Blessing. And then now we're seeing him trying to get away. He didn't immediately go seek out Rand again. Rand happens to come across him and Kyrian, you right. know? And it's right. like, but but again, I do think it's going to take some time, but like it does sort of seem like, well, like when the Aes Sedai show up or or maybe you take it, maybe Tom takes it all the way back to Moraine starting all of this and getting these boys involved in this and now has stirred up something and he's roped in it and he just wants to live this simple life uh with with this um with this girl and they wanted to kind of move and do things and I mean the great hunt of the horn is on uh so many cool things are happening but he is a boss right here this is a moment for him he is he is right so he walks in and his then yeah Dean has been Throat's been cut, right? And so there's, you know, so the thing I find interesting though is as as he's dealing with the assassins, right? Is that one of them is like, you know, nothing personal, right? And the man explains he was sent, you know, by Vithanus to find out about him, right? And he talks about how, you know, we could fill our our pockets, right? Like it's like, hey, sorry, I just killed your girlfriend, but if you want to be rich, uh, here we go, right? And right. So Tom's like, obviously, you know, you made one real mistake in it all, and that was killing the girl. Then he kills, then he kills him. I mean, what was what? What, what did you expect? Right. Like, I mean, yeah, like, again, what is what is, what, what, do you, what do you expect? I mean, hey, you you killed my you killed my lover, but let's be let's be rich. Uh, no, that people don't do that. Right. Yeah. This this part. Let me see here. Let me just I got this. I got this right here. So um, let's see. The man tried to pull his head away from the knife in Tom's hand and Tom pushed him harder against the wall. Uh, what Andoran Lord? But he knew the light help him. He knew Rand of House Althor, tall, young, a blade master or at least he wears the sword. So he's trying to get information uh, on this Lord. He's, but this is what this assassin's been sent for. Uh, I know he came to see you, him and the Ogier, and you talked. Tell me what you know. I might even throw in a crown or two myself. You fool, Tom breathed. And then he thinks to himself, Dana died for this. Um, oh, light, she's dead. He felt as if he wanted to cry. The boy's a shepherd, a shepherd in a fancy coat with eyes to die around him like bees around honey roses. Just a shepherd, he says. He tightened his grip on the man's hair. Wait, wait. You can make more than five crowns, or even ten, a hundred or more. Every house wants to know about this Randall Thor. Two or three have approached me. With what you know and my knowings, uh, and my knowing who wants to know this information, we could both fill our pockets. So it's just different morals. It's just different standards and, and stuff. And he doesn't quite understand how close... He just doesn't think this through because, you know, as you said, why would Rand go visit you know, Tom? And if you were paying any attention right. to that, you would know that there was a relationship there and, and that they knew each other. And it was, you know, maybe this guy's not going to turn against Rand. Um, right. So but then, as you say, yeah, you made the, the one real mistake he made was that he harmed the girl. And, and for right. that, he's, he kills him. <laughs> right. So yeah, faster faster than the other guy could even could even handle too, which again yeah. shows that Tom is is a boss. And I I I I I really start to like Tom. And you know, um I was kind of thinking I was kind of thinking about we, we either talk about Tom in extended edition or we could save the put on Fane uh little segment here at the end for, for yeah, we can do that. edition. Yeah. Um and so I so we can just kind of finish up with Tom here. And you know, one of the things is I think, you know, Tom's heard all these things of Rand, like, you know, like we found the horns, like what, what are you talking about? And now he's all these eyes to die around him and stuff. And I feel like for Tom, it's just going to be the moment that he sees Rand, like really use the one power is when maybe things will change a little bit. Right. Which I guess can also be kind of my, my prediction uh, for next time too, is that I, I think that, you know, here, here shortly, I think Tom will, will see Rand use, um, the one power and that'll kind of change his 
his kind of because I don't he's not necessarily that he doesn't like Rand or anything like that, but it's just kind of he's in the spot where, you know, how did I get wrapped up into all of this? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, how did I mean, one day I'm just going to bell time to you know hey here's a, yeah here's a festival that's going on i'm gonna go make some money like normal the next thing you know you've got Aes Sedai and and um o gear and trollocs and, <laughs> and you know what i mean like to veer in i mean how you know how'd you how do you ever think you get wrapped up in all of that stuff when when you're just going you know you're living your day-to-day life the the way you normally do. So um, I think it's cool. And I, I'm glad we finally get a little bit more kind of character development with Tom. I mean, you know, we just kind of met him and he's been more of a character, you know, it's been Rand focused and, or Matt or Perrin focused. And now it's kind of Tom focused. So I, th- I thought it was yeah. really cool. It's heartbreaking. His, his, his girl, uh, yeah. his girl dies, but well, I think, yeah. that, I think, I think, I think here, you know, probably soon here, maybe we'll see, Tom will see Rand use the power and it'll all kind of start to click and, and make sense as to what it is we got going on here. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sure. I, I, um, one more thing, I guess, to kind of drive j- just a point, I don't want to forget to mention. So, uh, Tom is deciding what to do. And I, I guess we need to stress too, that, that, um, Lord Barthanus and King Galdrion had a feud and this was mentioned in these chapters and I just didn't really bring it up, but like it's t- like they feud against one another. And so all among these men that were here, there were men from both of them. And so Tom talks like he's going to go seek revenge, but they've already killed Lord Barthanus is already dead and has right. already been, you know, killed. And so then he finds out one of Galdrian's men is there and, um, Dina or Dana, uh, his, his right. girl, um, I, th- I think it's Zara. The, the innkeeper says, she would not want you dead. She does not. She would. She would want you to live, and because right. he's thinking about just. I mean, he's a man who. Amazing. This is this. I right. mean, I, I, I like. I don't know. This was an innocent girl who, who wanted to learn from Tom and who loved Tom. Right. And he got her wrapped up in all. Of yeah, this, and and so know. he kind of feels like responsible, and so he wants to take these guys out. And the the uh, by the way though. The fact that Tom thinks he could <laughs> and, and right, Tom yeah. thinks that he, he could maybe uh, get close enough. I mean, as a gleeman in guises and disguises, whatever, like he could. He's a boss. He's an absolute boss. And I love I love Tom Maryland so much. Um, but uh, yeah, so this was definitely a big and I think you're right. This is probably a good spot to kind of, you know, stop with him and then we can switch over to Falma uh, and and talk about uh, Pot on Fane here in just a little in a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah. OK. OK. Woo, wow. I mean, let me tell you something. Let me just say, I as as we go along, it it is hard to hit every point. Um, it yeah. is a lot to take in. And I just want to tell people too, you know, that like this is something new that we we, we gosh. So Matt and I have never done done t- a first read. Done a first read. Yeah. And it is and I'm realizing that. And some people read this series so fast, even though it's long, it is it it is a fast read. People will read through it very quickly because it has there's especially the first couple books, the first, you know, four or five books, a lot of energy, a lot of tense moments, and people just fly through it. And when you go at that rate and that and that that speed, you pick up things. Like I, I think if right. we weren't doing a podcast, you would read through this and you would say, you know what? I don't even need to know about the I'm not gonna look into um, the Shan Chen quite yet. I'm going to just let this sit here. I'm sure there's going to be more on that later. And we just kind of move on. And the more it's woven back into the story, like the white cloaks and the Shan Chen and the Kyrie and, um, we, we get it along the way. So, you know, it's, it's just like at, when you slow down and you, and you hyper-focus, uh, uh, as much as we are, even though it's not like chapter by chapter, um, we're doing batches of chapters. It's still, I think, quite an undertaking and this is all this is also why i've always been we you and i have talked for years about like the show and just like how do you pull this off how it do just, you do it? It, it yeah it's 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 unreal and there are so many characters that are brought up in the first three to four books that it's just like wow and we haven't even scratched the surface yet not uh, even close. <laughs> so and that is something else like it is so so right. daunting so if you're feeling overwhelmed if you're a first-time reader um just know, I, you know, Sir Matt, I mean, openly said, like, that was something I wanted you to say to folks that, like, yeah, it is, 
a yeah, lot. This, this 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 particular block for me, I was like, hold on a second. There's a lot going on here. Right. But yeah, you know, that's okay. I mean, that, again, you know, I go back. I listen to our our blocks twice, and I still feel like uh, I have to defer to Sir Ezra a lot for for this. And that's okay. It's good to have somebody who's read it uh, multiple times because it is a lot. And we're going we're going kind of fast. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, for me, I would I would for me if I was just doing this without podcasting about it, I would plow through the entire series once and then probably just plow through the entire series again and be like okay like now i'm getting it that's what i did with game of thrones so yes um yep. and again once the show comes out i think it'll make it a lot easier i think that's one of the reasons i was able to dive um deep into game of thrones was because there is a show and so i think when the yeah. show is here it just makes it easier because it's it's a much easier to go back and watch an episode um and then yes. just be like okay hold on a second no this is what's different in the book so you just ha- have that extra kind of yeah, visual, it does. Visual thing. So once that comes out, and then, um, uh, in terms of if you want more visuals, uh, come check out our YouTube page because we're starting yeah. to begin to break stuff down. And Ezra is, uh, Ezra starting to do some videos uh, explaining, uh, just kind of who are these this character, right? Murder right. all, whatever. What are they and stuff like that. So it makes yeah. it a little bit easier too. It- so. Yeah, and, and let me give you. So I, I I love that you bring that up because some people are kind of like, oh, I just like the books, and and that and that's their thing, and that's totally fine. We are definitely going to be a book slash show, you know, podcast because we are we're we're into that. I think it adds another layer. It's a different adaptation, and it adds another experience to which right. it does help sort of internalize some of the um, reading. Uh, and again, we don't know yet how well it's going to be pulled off or or how authentic it's going to be to the series. None of that is known yet, but. Uh, right. I think it's in good hands, but I will say too, if you do come over to the YouTube, um, I will, I will try my very best to mark stuff with spoiler. That is spoiler. Um, so right. if you're, cause we know that we have a lot of people who are reading through for the first time. And, uh, and I definitely do try to, you know, when, when Sir Matt has questions, there's, there's times where I just have to say, I'm sure it's tough, right? Yeah. We're, we're, we're ready to say that yet. Yeah. Not, not yet or whatever. And like and earlier, you do, that. you do, you do that. You do that a lot when we're just talking. Well, and it's also it's also really tough too. Like you, I, we were talking about um, maidens of the spear earlier, and like right. uh, I was going to use a term that I don't think has been introduced yet, and so I was like, so "Oh man, yeah. It, yeah." Well, yeah. So I just I I because what I call it, like I brought up the naming thing because uh, people are called different names or different groups of people are called different things by depending on what region you're in, and sometimes I latch on to one. And that's what I will call it. But it happened to be something that I learned later on in the series. So that's that's tough. So I would just say it's it's uh, if, if ever, you know, something slips out that is sort of, um, you know, uh, hinting or, or leading us one way or the other. It's not intentional. And uh, right. it's just sort of trying to answer those questions because I I do want, uh, you know, I like if if you are confused and I would even like being a teacher, being an English teacher, when my kids are reading through a book or whatever, and there's a stopping point where they want to, we sometimes have to recap and we have to go over what has happened. What are these different regions? What are the kingdoms? Who's in power? All that kind of stuff. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that actually can help the the reading experience sometimes. It just depends on what you want and what you're going for. Again, if you're just shooting through to try to get through everything, get acclimated pretty quick, then just, you know, yeah, that's what you want to do and plow you know, right on through. But if you want to go a little more deep and, and, and have a little uh, more thorough experience, then I think the podcast is something good to listen to. A lot of people tell me that when you're reading through the series, some people get overwhelmed and they stop because it doesn't make sense. And I'm too confused or they lost something or, 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 or whatever it may be. Um, and they, they don't continue. I've actually seen people on, gosh, there's a, there's a fantasy, uh, YouTuber out there, forget his name. Um, but who, who, wants to commentate on the series and wants to give uh, his thoughts and things on the series, but yet hasn't finished it. And reasons being just kind of got lost and didn't have the, didn't go back and want to reread it and didn't want to fully understand it. And then so has a critique of the series that is negative, you know, says like the series is just not, you know, something that they, they, they can handle. And that's where I think a podcast and YouTube and, and a book club can be helpful just to kind of, you know, go through, these texts it's a great text and there's 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 tons of really uh cool themes and elements 
in Robert Jordan's work. It's it's absolutely amazing. I went off in the our expanded edition just about how much I I love this series. And Lady Heather was in there, and she's like, I get it. <laughs> she's like, I, I I get it, and it is epic. And when we get off of here, Sir Matt and I will talk, and we're just like, right. dude. I mean, we'll we'll kind of go more just uh, real informal discussion about Tom and the Aiel, and we'll we'll recap stuff and and kind of sure it up for you know, as we, as we move forward, but, um, yeah, it's only going to, and there, there's batches. Let me say this too. There's batches like this where you're introduced to players in Kyrian. You're introduced to, uh, Aiel and its culture, the Shanchen, and you wove in the white cloaks. So, you know, we've decided to take on that task and not do a chapter by chapter, uh, reread where you could go chapter by chapter and really slow it down and, and you could really... God, that would take um, forever. It, and, 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 and really, our whole goal is that we're hoping that people are going to jump into this, this series, read with us, get acclimated, get into the series, really know about it, and then be able, when they you know you, you go to the show, to really get that experience of what it's like to, to see the difference. And then even those people who started watching the show and who come to the podcast later, uh, and I'm speaking to you know those individuals in the future... Uh, you know, we want them to come in and sort of they're they're going to come in with a different understanding, and they're actually Sir Matt going to have they're, they're going to be knowing more about potentially Logan and other characters. They're starting those threads way earlier, and so that's going to affect how they would read the books. You know what I mean? They're coming in with some knowledge, so it's just um, it, it's it's a interesting time to to be in Wheel of Time and to be you know studying this stuff and 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 re experiencing it. So. Um, yeah, just kind of want to mention all of that, I guess, as we, as we continue to move forward, because there'll be these batches of chapters where we just stick with Rand the whole time and that's good and it's solid. And it's this string of six or seven chapters where it's just really good character development. We stay with that main band and we don't really go to other countries and learn about different regions. We don't jump around quite a bit, but then there will be these batches where we do do that and those are the times where we probably have to take a little bit longer in the episode and we have to kind of slow stuff down a little bit and, and explain. So absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, all right. Well, Hey guys, stay tuned for extended edition as we'll finish up that little bit of the, uh, put on fane, uh, there at the end, but we do want to thank you guys for answering the call. In our next episode, we will be discussing the great hunt chapters 35 through 43. If you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a message at thehornofvalier at gmail.com. We will see you soon. And remember that the grave is no bar to our call.